Hello and welcome back to Revender in Sports. And this is a post service video. I just didn't have the time to shoot a pre video. I, I just got so busy. And if, um, if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for coming. Please consider subscribing. Um, so I talk about bike maintenance here, but I do talk about a lot of other things and um, not typically a how-to video, although you will still still learn some things. So try to watch my videos from front to back all the way through because I'm constantly throwing nuggets of information in there. All right, so this bike came in because the gentleman, uh, a specialized tarmac that I just did a video on, um, he needed some bar tape wrap, and then this one, he needed a rear derailleur adjustment. I said, okay, bring them in. But in the intake, I noticed his chain was completely worn. I asked him about his tires. When was the last time he had his tubeless, uh, I'm sorry, his sealant refreshed, replaced. And, you know, has he ever, does he know? Oh, he didn't even know. Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about this bike because he got this bike used from a friend who had not ridden it for a couple of years at least i'm not sure on the time frame so i didn't do a tune-up but i kind of went through it more than i than just a derailleur adjustment because sometimes it's funny sometimes folks complain about a bike shop that charged them x amount of dollars for something and it's like well, yes, because if he's a good mechanic, the item you came in for, he probably, like I used to when I was an aircraft mechanic in the Marine Corps, jet, jet engine mechanic, you look in about a 12 inch, depending on where you're, where you're working, but 12 inch to 24 inch sphere all the way around to ensure that you don't miss anything. Cause you may be the last mechanic that touches that bike or in my case that jet aircraft before it launches out again and you want to make sure yes i'm here to fix this but let me look around see if there's anything else is there any hydraulic fluid leaking any oil or fuel leaks or anything right so anyway uh so that's what i do with bikes when they come in now the first thing i do want to talk about is his front brake um has um it 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 bottoms out and then you keep squeezing it, keep squeezing it, and then it finally comes back to life. So I'm gonna recommend a brake bleed service for the front. The rear has always been fine, but uh, the bike is being hung on a hook. Now, uh, there's varying opinions on whether you should hang hydraulic disc brake bikes on a hook. Obviously, um, some say it creates some type of void or vacuum, I'm sorry, um, bubble or something in the system. So I don't know what to tell you, but um, if you don't ride the bike a long time, uh, that could be a problem. But I think if you ride it consistently, it shouldn't be a problem. Um, so let's work our way down the fork. Now, this particular um, through axle is stuck. And I definitely want to tell you folks that your pro tip for today is to go out to your bike. If it's got through axles, your gravel bike, your your um, mountain bike, pull out your skewer, your through axles today, grease them today. <laughs> um, stuck through axle is a thing. YouTube has plenty of videos on it, but it's probably best to just keep them lubed. If you don't ride much or if you don't flat much, you have no reason to remove your, your wheel and then, you know, it seizes up. So take out your through axle and lubricate it and then put it back in. Now, next thing I do want to ask some of you folks, it looks like this is split here, so I should be able to loosen these two bolts. There's two on the other side as well. And I should be able to get that through axle out. Um, but you don't have this on gravel bikes or road bikes. So we might be able to get this through axle out. So if anyone has comments on that, please make a comment down below. Um, not, not, you know, <laughs> as confident with mountain bikes as I am with road bikes. But anyway, 
that's that that's your pro tip of today now I clean the sidewalls of the tires now, it's a mountain bike so why clean it but a lot of times you may find cracks on the rims you may find uh, you, you know a nipple is cracked or pulled through or something so you want to clean the uh, the wheel now both of these tires were uh, there was no sealant in there it was just completely dried and so there was no sealant so we put sealant in both of these tires and then we also replaced the chain and I gave the cassetta once over just because I wanted to inspect the teeth once again this is one of those situations where well I just you know I just need the chain replaced well you know as a good mechanic or home mechanic Clean that cassette because you may find something wrong. You know, he may, you know, your climbing gears may be just fine. And then all of a sudden, you know, one or two of these cogs are just completely worn out. And you're trying to dial in the, the derailleur and that's why you can't dial it in, right? So replace the chain and clean the cassette. And it shifted a little bit better, but then just like god it's just just not great there's just something not shifting great about it so i replaced the derailleur housing and cable now with a lot of mountain bikes they're full housing from front to back right so right here comes into the frame on the other side comes down through the frame comes out this fitting goes through here <laughs> see if I can shoot that and then goes through this hole in the frame and then comes out this little hole in the frame <laughs> so a little bit of a nightmare to get that full housing all the way through the frame but I recommend on road bikes or any bike for that matter but particularly road bikes because I work on them more hey let's get your cables and housing replaced if obviously if you're on a mechanical system let's get your cables and housing replaced because we can optimize your shifting uh, by keeping those cables fresh not to mention you don't want them to break when you're when you're riding right you don't want them to snap when you're out on the road um, so this this cable and housing now optimize the shifting to where now every time you shift to um and let me explain what was happening as well so derailers work with tension in the up direction to get gears in the up direction there are some derailers from way back in the 80s or 90s that were in reverse but let's just work with this one the cable tension will bring the chain up to your climbing cogs but then the cable relaxes every time you shift down the block right so if you're going down this direction it's a relaxing there's no nothing mechanically pulling it so what happens is you can always give it tension to go up the cassette but for it to relax there has to be no friction in the drivetrain anywhere so no friction in the housing uh, the cable has to be in good shape everything has to work well for the derailleur to come down the, the block so oftentimes if you can dial in a derailleur and it goes up but it doesn't go down you just need to replace the cable and housing and you'll be happier because you won't spend another three hours trying to figure out and that's an exaggeration of course but even if you spend another half hour doing that just replace the cable and housing and immediately your shifting performance um, it just goes back to 100 percent of uh, how the bike was originally built now this is a, a pretty low-end mountain bike drivetrain the gx stuff but it shifts just fine if it's got good fresh cable and housing so that's what we did for the drivetrain the other complaint he had was his um, his dropper post does not extend easily enough. Uh, so it drops no problem, of course, that's weight, but then it's got to spring back up. 
And I'd like to hear from you folks what suggestions you have to make that happen. Um, I use a product here and it's called Slick Honey. And uh, it's right here. And I've used this before for dropper posts or even on stanchions. But the thing is that these seals are so good that it's hard to get this lube past the seals, you know, because they're doing their job. But in this case, I wish the job wasn't being done so perfectly because I want to get some lube in there to see if I can get that to work. So uh, I need two hands. I need a hand on the trigger and I need my elbow on the on the seat to push it down so I won't be able to show you but it just it just hesitates a little bit and sometimes it doesn't come up at all actually so anyway that is all for today so I'm looking for some suggestions just a quick recap if someone knows if just by loosening these bolts I can get that through axle out and then what have you done to free up a stuck dropper post Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I, I run through bikes like this just to give people an idea of what we did, what to look for, if you're a home mechanic, what to expect if you go to a bike shop, and or what how to repair something at home. Okay, thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and we'll see you up the road.